How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question from Ecology Step 1. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads, moment underscore medical, and me at channel man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram links to Telegram group channel down below. And start the clip. 39 year old woman. She has a 10 year history of rheumatoid arthritis, managed multiple medications, pulmonary function testing. Shows a normal FV1 over FVC chest x ray. Shows mild reticulonodularity bilaterally. An agent that inhibits which the following is the most likely explanation of the patient's presentation. Let's just whip through the answers here. Choice A, calcium channels, wrong fucking answer. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, which act on peripheral arterioles such as nifedipine and modipine, can cause peripheral edema slash fluid retention. Very fucking high yield, especially for family medicine for 2CK. So if you get a patient come in and he or she has puffiness of the arms and sometimes, uh, well, the legs and sometimes the arms, you want to be thinking about not just cardio, hepatic, and renal ideologies for peripheral edema, but also, holy shit, have you checked the, the drugs the patient's on? It can just simply be amlodipine or nifedipine was added recently. Very clutch and very important that you know that factoid. And then also uh, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker verapamil, which acts on cardiac nodal tissue, can cause constipation. Also very fucking important for family medicine 2CK. And obviously step one, knowing high yield side effects. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, cyclooxygenase, wrong fucking answer. So first to NSAIDs, acetaminophen as well. So acetaminophen inhibits cyclooxygenase centrally, and that can obviously, if in excess, lead to hepatic failure. Okay, so NAPQI as the metabolite, and you can give uh, charcoal, activate charcoal very acutely, but also N-acetylcysteine, buzzy, high yield, you gotta know to give. And then just NSAIDs, aspirin, uh, obviously they can cause renal insufficiency. That's a very important adverse effect of aspirin, it can cause GI bleeding, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, dihydrofolate reductase, correct answer. So this refers to methotrexate, Okay, well, you need to know methotrexate can cause pulmonary fibrosis. Holy shit. So it's not traumatic. I mean, you either know it or you don't. So this is what's going to go down. When you have rheumatoid arthritis, this is how you manage it. You've got the symptomatic arm of therapy, which is just NSAIDs followed by steroids. Those treat symptoms only. They do not uh, slow disease progression. Then you have the second arm of therapy, which is the DMARDs, disease-modifying anti drugs, which can slow disease trajectory. And that's going to be methotrexate classically first. Classically first, okay? And that inhibits dihydrofolate reductase and methotrexate. It, it can cause pulmonary fibrosis, cause neutropenia. That's a granulocytosis with mouse, mouth ulcers. It can cause increased LFTs. But for USMLE, I'd say a granulocytosis with mucositis and pulmonary fibrosis. And you also should know that a reticulonodular pattern on chest x-ray is extremely buzzy for, for pulmonary fibrosis, okay? So you may have seen it in questions, I haven't realized it, and now you'll see if they say reticular or they say reticulonodular, that means honeycombing, okay? They can say dry crackles bilaterally on auscultation, so that can be seen in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, aka usual interstitial pneumonitis. You need to know UIP is another name for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. That's, that's on the new NBMEs twice. And you should just know in general, just any cause of fibrosis it could be bleomycin, right? It could be amiodarone, busulfan, methotrexate. So, I mean, these drugs can cause pulmonary fibrosis. Don't confuse reticular slash reticulonodular with reticulogranular in NRDS, neonatal respiratory stress syndrome, obviously completely unrelated. So let's just whip through the final answer choice here. NF-cap would be your own fucking answer. So steroids can decrease signaling of the NF-kappa B pathway. That's the long story short, okay? So NF-kappa B is bound to what's called I-kappa B in the cytosol inhibitor of NF-kappa B. And if you have dissociation of I kappa B from NF kappa B, NF kappa B can go down to the nucleus and upregulate gene transcription for inflammation. So you're gonna have steroids which cause uh, phosphor or cause prevent the phosphorylation of I kappa B, prevent the release of NF kappa B. So that will decrease gene transcription ultimately. It's a long fucking discussion, okay? But there's a question on one of the NBME exams where they ask you just point blank, uh, what the role of I kappa B is. And you're like, what the fuck? And the answer is releases NF kappa B after undergoing phosphorylation. Okay. It sounds super nitpicky. Just know I kappa B normally 
releases NF-kappa B after undergoing phosphorylation, and steroids can merely inhibit that. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, TNF-alpha, wrong fucking answer. So for DMARDs after methotrexate, if that's insufficient for the patient, sometimes the anti-TNF-alpha agent can be added, such as adalimumab and fliximab. Those are exceedingly high yield. Monoclonal antibodies against soluble TNF-alpha, not TNF-alpha receptor. And then, you ha and then, of course, you have etanercept, which is a recumbent TNF-alpha receptor that can bind to slash mop up soluble TNF-alpha. Uh, Anti-TNF-alpha drugs should not be given to patients who have silicosis because of increased risk of TB in those patients. And that being said, anytime you're going to commence an anti-TNF-alpha drug, you need to do a PPD test because of the risk. You need to see if there's latent TB in that patient because there's increased risk of uh, TB in patients who are anti tnf alpha agents. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.